When talking about F1's most polarizing figures, a lot of names can come up. Names such as Dr. Helmut Marko, Bernie Eccleston, or even seven-time world champion Lewis Hamilton. But as you have seen from the title of the video, today's subject won't be any one of those personalities, but none other than Hermann Tilke, F1's most famous track designer. General opinion on his work divides people more than whether you should be standing up or sitting down while wiping. Trust me, it's a more serious argument than you would think. I'm not here to give a definite answer on whether Tilke's designs are good or not, I'm simply here to give my two cents on the topic. In order to do that, I will be ranking each of his tracks and leave you to have your own conclusion. Important to note that I won't be taking into account redesigns of already existing tracks such as the Mexican GP or Hockenheim, as it's not an original work coming 100% from the German's brain. Although when discussing Tilke's work, I think that the redesigns are a point worth mentioning and factoring in, especially considering that he is the one responsible for atrocities such as the final sector of Circuit de Catalonia. Another note would be the question surrounding the Hanoi circuit, as we haven't seen racing on it yet, but the early signs aren't too bright. Jeddah also won't be taken into account, as we only had one race there so far, but it's not looking too good. The track was too narrow, shown by multiple crashes, both during free practice and qualifying, not to mention the huge crash during the race. Nevertheless, the race gave us one of, if not the most memorable moment of the season. Now on to the ranking. The worst track is none other than Sochi. Everyone knew this was coming. Even if the latest race in Sochi brought surprise and to be frank, a quite interesting race, it was mainly down to the weather. The Sochi Autodrome remains undoubtedly the worst track on the current calendar and it is about the only thing on which all fans of the sport can agree on. Thankfully it will be replaced in 2023 by the Igora Drive, meaning that there will be only one race left for us to endure the equivalent of Burger King in terms of F1 tracks. In terms of racing, we just have to mention Alonso in 2010 or Hamilton in 2016. It's pretty self-explanatory, the track just doesn't allow for overtakes. I find it absurd that it became the final race of the season taking the place from such a legendary track such as Interlagos. The only positive thing I can say about the track is the hotel section of which the design is impressive. It's a shame that the racing done there isn't, but money talks. In terms of originality, it's a classic Tilke track, with one of the longest straights on the calendar, twisty asses and heavy braking zones. But most importantly, bigger infrastructure with the hotel going over the track or the Ferrari fan zone, as well as the most unique pit box ever made. As most street races, there aren't a lot of overtaking opportunities in Valencia, but the track still provided the occasional entertaining race, such as 2012, where Mr. Maldonado was on a mission, not to mention Alonso's emotional home win in front of a loving crowd and Michael Schumacher's last ever podium. I know this will be a pretty unpopular opinion, but it's a track I enjoy during its short time on the calendar, despite the background of it. In terms of originality, Tilke did not have a lot to work with as he had to design the track around the city's harbor. The track has 25 turns with heartbreaking zones, but as it's in a harbor, it doesn't have an elevation or any really challenging parts to it. To be fair to Tilke, there's not a lot he could have done with what he was given. The Seb Vettel circuit. The only winner of Bud, the track fitted him and the car perfectly. The fact that he won his fourth championship there only demonstrates this fact. But the racing was solid with a lot of overtaking opportunities. It's a typical Tilke circuit with long straights, Turkey turn 8, modern infrastructure, heavy braking zones, medium speed double corner are all present in India. He went back to what worked, although implemented elevation changes, which he seemed to enjoy as they are present in the US as well. The whole project was a failure, considering that a whole city was meant to be built around it, but it obviously never happened, for multiple reasons. Unfortunately for the track, the racing itself wasn't something to rave about, as there wasn't a lot of overtaking opportunities. Definitely not his worst work, but the telltale signs of a Tilke track are still there, with back-to-back straights, high speed asses, tight WL Turkey and a medium speed double corner. But there are a lot of positive points to it as well, like a lot of elevation change and what should have been a mixture between an old school circuit and a street circuit. 
While not all of them, we still had a few exciting races in China, such as Michael Schumacher's last ever victory in 2006 or Danny Rick's surge through the midfield in 2018. Overall solid racing, but nothing more. I don't have anything to say about the track, it simply exists. Building from the success of Malaysia, Tirka seems to have done the same track, but just more. Longer straights, twistier turns, bigger buildings, and there you have the Chinese GP. In terms of racing in Austin, we had a few solid races, such as Verstappen's overtake and subsequent penalty on the last lap in 2017, or Kimi Raikkonen's last ever win in 2018. This might be a controversial take, but I don't like Kota. Apart from the asses in the first sector, there's not a part of the track I enjoy. I for one really enjoy the show coming with Austin, it's over the top, extra representing of everything that the US is about, but once again, that's a topic for another time. The track usually provides entertaining racing, but overtaking seems to be harder than ever with the 2021 regulations despite the three DRS zones. It's a track I enjoy watching, but nothing more than that. There is no particular excitement coming with the track, although 2020 was the exception. Taking from his success in Malaysia, Tilke followed the same model. A wider track with long straights and heavy braking zones, all under the floodlights, the track is an undoubtable success. What more can be said? The unpredictability of the track ranks it among the best in the calendar, and it's a race I look forward to each and every year. It provided us with a few of the most exciting races since 2016, but unfortunately, when we are unlucky, the track can provide some boring races, such as the first one ever held in 2016. The track is definitely a fan favorite for many of its aspects, notably the racing provided by the track. We can mention the 2020 race where the weather obviously played a huge part in the entertainment, but the track also allowed for overtakes, which cannot be said for many of Tilke's tracks. Even if someone were to put down 2020 being entertaining only down to the weather, we can also mention the 2005 race or 2010. When I have to rank my favorite modern F1 tracks, Istanbul Park is on the top of my list. In terms of originality, we only have to mention Turn 8, which later became a favorite not only amongst the fans, but for Tilke himself as well. The first race came with the return of Michael Schumacher after a broken leg where he took pole by nearly a second. He would eventually display great teamwork by letting Eddie Irvine through and help him win the race which gave him the championship lead going into the final race of the season. But the 1999 season is a topic for another video. Other than the first race, we had famous moments such as Multi-21 or even Hamilton's engine blowing up in 2016 which would prove to be a huge factor in the title decider. It's a shame that F1 doesn't go there anymore because we always knew that we would be entertained come the Malaysian GMP but with lowering attendance, there's nothing really to do about it. This Hilke's first F1 track and it brought a fresh air of modernity to the sport. Characterized by modern infrastructures around the track, it has two long straights, fast S's and heavy braking zones, which make for Tilke's finest work. In conclusion, as with everything in life, the answer is not a clear yes or no, but it's nuanced. Tilke's impact on F1 is unquestionable, even if it's for the better or for worse. He's had some clear misses such as Korea and Sochi, but clear successes as well like Turkey and Malaysia. I've shown the facts and my opinions, it is now down to you to choose and evaluate for yourself.